What's up, guys? This is the ninth episode yes. of the Tobies. That will be correct. Uh, I oh, <laughs> I never remember what <laughs> fucking number we're on. Um, so it's number nine. Uh, again, thank you for being on the Patreon. That is the only way you're going to see this. Uh huh. Um, but this is the Think Outside the Box episode. And we have a good one today of just kind of management, leadership, kind of stuff like that. Um, so I'll have you so, go yeah, ahead. So, um, yeah. This concept in and of itself, I personally don't think, you don't think either, um, it seems like, is pretty out there in and of itself, not out the box. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's the name of this but, thing. But socially it is. Right, right. Or culture, or however right. you want to say or, it. Or, you know, that, that's kind of what I want to discuss. So, in a nutshell, I had a, um, I had a conversation with somebody that I work with. Who is um? I, he is not my direct boss, but he is. He has the orders to tell me what to do and whatnot. And then um, under him, he has several individuals that are going off to to pretty much other to run other departments in the store. And um, you know, he's like, I got so and so going here next week, and they just left here this week and last week, such such left. And then I'm thinking about putting them over there. And um, you know, I ended up saying like, wow. Well, he said he made the comment that, that that looks good on me, you know, that I got so many people out of my department moving right. up. Right. And I was like, hell yeah, it does. And I was like, must mean you're doing something right. And he was like, you take care of your people, everything else falls into place. I was like, yes, I know. Like, he is the actual, the first manager I've ever heard say that. Like, And he, he's a younger dude. He's yeah. probably, what, 26? He, I don't 25, know. Right. A little yeah. younger. Younger yeah. than 30. Let's say oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, uh, it kind of blew my mind because, you know, you read about it, but to actually hear somebody actually say it and, you know, that they utilize it and to actually kind of see the results of that because he's, he's not lying. Like, I've heard these the same exact thing he told me. Right. In other circles. So, you know, I just kind of want to talk about why that is, like, why it's not practiced. And I, I work in a pretty big area, like a big store. Um, big retail store. So uh, you would think, I don't know, man. If I'm a manager and I'm trying to get these people to perform their work, let's take it all the way down to the basic level. The basic level is to get people to perform to the highest their ability, right? Right. What would it take for somebody to do that? Hmm. Me personally, I was like, okay, we have to make them comfortable here. We have to make them care about what they mm-hmm. do somehow, some way, and actually not only give a fuck about what they're doing, but give a fuck about the company they work for. Right. Some hmm. level of respect right. for the job and the people around them. Hmm. What would that take? Oh, I think uh, naturally if somebody showed an interest in my personal life right. and how I'm doing, not, you know, Hey, what's up? You know, how you doing today? And the, the cliche, oh, I'm good. Or, right. eh. You know, maybe treat them like a human. That that sounds, is that possible though? No. No. You no. know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and I think, especially with big corporations, maybe this is not so much in smaller ones. Uh, I know there's a few exceptional companies that are huge, but exceptional with their people. But it's all in their thinking. You know, I think the particular place that I work at, the management gets so caught up and their orders from the top down that they forget to treat their people. And maybe it's, I don't even know. Maybe it is them that they just reflected how they get treated. Oh, well, my boss talks to me like I'm a piece of shit. Right. And I'm always stressing out and making sure my shit's done. So, hmm, maybe if I talk to my people like they're a piece of shit and stressing them out, maybe more get done. Right. True for a little bit, you know what I mean? But in the, in the long run, I don't feel like that's the way to run things. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I've actually experienced both ways. So, um, I can say, cause I'm not with them anymore. Star tech actually, uh, trained us as management, um, to treat people with respect and kind of what you're saying and treat them like a human and get to know them and, uh, there was literally any time anybody came to your team, uh, you did a coaching called a getting to know you okay. and you take them off the phones for a half hour and you just go talk and chill. Uh, you give them a little bit of kind of expectations about your team and what to expect and you know, what, what you're like as a manager or whatever, but that takes five minutes and the other 25, you just hang out. What are you into? 
you got kids, you got siblings, right, you're married, right. like, right. and you, you get to know them and build that relationship. Now, I can say, uh, you know, the higher ups in StarTech preached it, but didn't, uh, didn't practice it, which is kind of where there was a, a disconnect there. Um, but as far as like my people and, and my team and things like that, like they did great. Um, I explicitly remember there was a, an agent that usually gave managers more trouble, uh, okay. you know, and, and didn't do that well and, and things like that. But it's because they all kind of treated him like he was a piece of shit because of maybe the way he acted or, or whatever. And when he came to my team, I said, look, man, like, I'll, I'll write your ass up and I'm not afraid to do that. But at the same time, like we're going to be homies. Basically we're going to, we're going to be friends and stuff like that. And he came to my team. There was a, like 120 agents. He was usually in the, in the bottom 20 and he came to my team and was in the top 10 for three months. Wow. Yeah. Turned right around. And then he went back to that manager's team bottom 20 again. Wow. And it was just a mixture of, you have to keep people accountable. Right. But there's a certain way to do it. Right. And when you're, I mean, kind of friends with them and know them a little better, like there's an easier way to do it. And the the accountability doesn't come across as like I'm yelling at you and you're terrible and things like that. It's like, look, man, like we can do better. I know you can do better. Let's just try this. It's a different approach. It's the same thing, but it's a different approach. And then I went to that factory mm-hmm. and was hired in there as a supervisor and they were the opposite. They were, I, I explained this to, you know, like uh, my current employer, they asked why I didn't stay there very long. And I said, you know, to be honest with you, we didn't have the same mindset when it comes to management. And they were very, very much yell first, ask questions later. Gotcha. And everybody in management was that way except me. And my team responded better. And they were like, how are you doing that? Like, why why do people not talk back to you and stuff like that? And I said, because I don't treat them like a piece of shit. Like, right. it's really it's easy. that simple. Yeah, but the way, the way they approach situations to me and things like that, again, there was a disconnect and, you know, don't want to get down that road. But yeah. it's just, it's so simple. I, I just don't understand. You think it's a, a generational thing? Like, with the older managers, it's just the way that they were brought up? Or do you think it's a reflection of, you know, their their bosses I, and their expectations of what should be done and they kind of use that and they panic and they don't even see? Like, I just don't understand. Like I said, where I work, man, they got people walking out left and right. And right. I understand it's 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 retail. It's not a job you most people are going to be comfortable with doing forever. Right. But when you when you get people that are willing to sign up, whatever their motivations are, they need money. Everybody knows that. You know, that's probably right. the, your primary reason. But, you know, it just seems like after so long, they all just default to this mindset of, well, you know, you're here. We hope you stay. But if you don't, whatever. This is your right. job. Do it. Right. If you don't, we'll write you up. If you decide to leave, okay, we'll hire another one. Like, right. that's never. My, my thing is, like, a manager, like, I'm not here to make your job harder. Right, like that's just it. I, I to, to answer your question, I think it's kind of a generational thing, um, but I also think it's kind of a confidence thing. To be honest with you, if like confidence in the manager, lack of oh, or lack of okay. lack of confidence okay. to where they think that they have to kind of fear monger and like gotcha. you know yell at people to get them to listen and things like that. It's it's a reflection on themselves because they don't think they're getting respected. And things gotcha. like that, they don't think that uh, people will listen to them if as a the nice leader. guy, quote yeah. unquote. Right. But right. again, like I, you know, you can say what you will as as me being a, a leader or manager or whatever. You know, I've always had there there has been issues with some agents, and you know, it's just what it is. But right. um, relatively, my team always responded well, and it was because. I treated them with respect and I'm not afraid to write you up. Right. It's not that I won't do it. Right. I'm going to try not to. Right. But you basically wrote yourself up like, and I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, so another, another thing like that always sticks out with me, 
uh, especially with this topic is again, how you approach stuff. Right. Yeah. So I had an agent, I don't remember what it was, but she missed, um, like, I forget what it was. It was like 50 hours or like 60 hours or something like that. Um, or no, it was more than that. It was like a hundred hours in the, in the course of like two months, three months. And I needed to write her up. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I was like, look, I, I, you know, we got to write you up and stuff like that. But I, I broke it down to her in a way of not it, not in a way of like, you know, do better. I'm gonna write you up. You up you're going to be fired. Like, Whatever, not in that way, but I broke it down with how many hours she missed on each shift, um, whether it was eight hours, whether it was two, whatever, and I added all those up. Uh, again, I don't remember the number, but I said, like, you know, you've missed 100 hours over the last, you know, uh, two months or whatever, and I said, that equates with your pay rate to, like, $1,100. And I said, you, you couldn't have used $550 a month in the last two months. Right. And then I related it to her. I said, hey, I know your daughter has a birthday coming up. Like, wouldn't that have helped? Like, right. and things like that. And, like, we got to stay on top of this so that, you know, she can have a great party and, you know, you guys can eat better. I, I don't right. really remember exactly what I said, but I related it back to her personal life. And I said, 550 a month, you just missed out on that's rent or close to it, For depending. a, a yeah. nice place in Mansfield, right. a, like a, a nice two-bedroom right. somewhere. I said you just threw out rent for the last two months. Like, right. if you would have just showed up to work every day, you would have been able to pay rent and kept all the money that you had, basically, on, right. on top of that. So it's just all about approach, man, and I don't I don't understand why people don't get that. I just, um, yeah, it's, I, not, yeah, it's not that difficult to understand. Right. You know, so I guess in a nutshell, we wanted to talk about uh, like the benefits of taking people um, personally, right. <laughs> you know, and not a piece of a, you know, like, oh, well, my damn, this the company's a car, my all my tire blew, and I just replaced the fucking tire. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, right. maybe if you'd have drove the car a little better, right, tire wouldn't have blew. Well, it's kind of like, uh, you know, we, we were talking before we recorded about people respecting their job and respecting their managers and things like that. So to, to your analogy, it's like, well, the motor blew because you never changed the oil. Right. But if you just kept up with it and kept changing that oil, that motor goes 200,000 miles. Right. You know what I mean? And that's, right. that's the difference is it's, it's a big thing for me. Are you proactive or are you reactive? Right. That's, that's the big difference. I'm proactive with how I treat my people. That way, when something happens, I don't have to be reactive. Right. Because now they're going to come to me. They're going to say, hey, I need somebody to switch this, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do our best to get it worked out. It doesn't always happen. But rather than just ditching that day and not finding a replacement, maybe with how I've treated people and things like that, now they come to me and say, hey, I'm going to need a replacement. Or they tried. They're like, hey, Steve can cover four hours of my shift. I tried to get the full thing, you know, and, and they're going to try to do what they can right? because they respect me. They respect the company at that point and things like that. Like, yep. it's just, you get so much more out of people if you treat them like people. Yes. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. Not a crazy concept. But it's crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I don't get it. All right. All right. <sighs> Good one. All right. Da, da, da. Toby. Toby. Hey guys, thanks for checking out that bonus episode from the Patreon. If you like what you see, please subscribe, share the video, uh, like the video, all that kind of stuff. Tell a friend. Uh, and if you want to see more of these bonus episodes three months before the public, sign up for our Patreon. Uh, we release new episodes every week and a ton of other bonus content. You can join for as little as two bucks a month. Um, other than that, we do have merch options and all that kind of stuff. Follow us on socials and everything like that as well. Uh, but we do appreciate the support. Have a good day.